And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Niels van der Baag with Black Dragon Forge. And uh, well, this is well, something new, yeah? Um, so a lot of guys have been asking about uh, the way I design daggers and, and, and. And uh, I came across, uh, well, I thought the Quillen dagger uh, template-based system. Um, and uh, well, the moment, a dagger that I'm building is kicking my ass. So I thought, well, uh, I need a, need an in-between project. And we've been playing around with this idea of building something live in real time. Yeah. Um, so came to the conclusion that if I don't start it today, I'll probably never start it. So this is it. Yeah. I hope you're not expecting much. Camera setup sucks. Uh, but um, at least, well, you'll get some insight into uh, my little world. Yeah. So what I have uh, in your lower screen is this here piece of paper. Yeah. So uh, we are going to swap this thingy around so that you can still see my mug um, while I am actually drawing on here. So uh, like I said in the description, I start off with a 90 millimeter handle. So from the Quillen block, which I've already drawn in, six millimeters wide or thick, and then 20 mil wide. So 10 mil from the center line out, uh, six mil down. Yeah. So from there to my top little mark there is 90 millimeters and then double the handle length from this point forward is uh, my line down here, which is 180 mil. Yeah, and those are rough guides that I start with. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, so that's purely a, a, a guide. So from here, I will then obviously from the Quillen block, I will then go and uh, do whatever. Yeah, so the uh, best part of this lot is, uh, well, no time like the present. So let's do this. Yeah, um, I have got software all over the place. So I'm going to be looking off camera to uh, just say hi for a couple of guys. Yeah, or to a couple of guys. Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Michel Zwan has already got his drink. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Stain also. Um, and then, uh, yeah, man, thank you, brother. This is uh, something new. Rick, how's it going, buddy? Uh, Sean. And uh, yeah, so uh, I will uh, get into comments every now and then if I look up and when I look up. But the basis of this is uh, if you have a look at the thumbnail. Yeah. These are the original sketches of those two uh, days. I actually think you can only see one of them. Um, I believe that's the one that I featured. If not, then it is that one. Yeah, so all my builds start with rough sketches. I've got a saying that if, uh, if, you, if you're going to have a house built, yeah, that house has to be, have plans. You can't just throw money at your at your builder or developer and say, "Go build me something." Same thing here. All the planning happens on paper. Yeah. So also something that I use is um, aspect ratio. Yeah. So these are um, aspect ratio calipers based on the uh, Fibonacci sequence. Um, they are also referred to as golden ratio calipers. Yeah. All right. So these ones are extremely big. Yeah. And I know a good mate of mine has these up for sale. Um, I don't know if he still has them got up, up for sale, but uh, if he does, yeah, what I'll do is I will, uh, well, I'll link it. Yeah. So long story short, there is no ratio based on the blade length and the handling. Yeah, so all I do is take my handle length and I double it. That's what I do. Done. So what I would do use the ratio for is on the actual handle itself. So I'm looking all over the place to try and find this area where you guys can see and then obviously I can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that to my 90 mil and then make a little mark. Done. That's it. Yeah, now I'm going to crunch it down and this is where this thing falls a bit. Flat, whoa, see it works perfectly. I'm gonna take that ratio, I'm gonna divide that again, and I'm gonna take that top there, and I'm just gonna let a little mark done. So essentially what I've done is I've used the aspect ratio on my handle. Did I make a little mark there? Yes, I did. All right, so there 
that there, I want the focal point in my handle. Okay, that there is where I'm going to start my my quillen, oh, my quillen, my uh, uh, pommel. So now I need to keep in mind that my thread that I'm going to run through here, if I'm going to do a full through tang, is going to be six millimeters that I'm using an M6 thread if I do use thread. Um, otherwise, if I make this as a single piece, then obviously that there doesn't matter. So if you're doing a through tang, you need to make sure that that is at least two millimeters wider than the six mil tang that you're going to be putting through. But in this, we're just doing a, a little block, yeah, a block there. I do want this as a centerpiece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an weird thickness, just a thickness. And I'm going to say my handle, I don't want to handle any part of it broader than uh, my quillen block. So that's going to be my limit there. And obviously I'm only going to be designing a single side on, on this dagger. Yeah, does that make sense? You only have to because it's a symmetrical dagger, unless you're going to do an asymmetrical guard on this thing. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm checking comments. But anyway, let me not get distracted. So what I do want to do is, I'm just a little bit chickier. I want to put a little arc in there. And I do want a little fat knob in the middle. Uh, I am then going to divide it up in that. So that I've got a straight line there. And I want to start just with equal measurements roundabout, nothing critical on both sides, then I would want to go up again, but a bit shallower than my initial up. Coming on this side, so I want those two curves to kind of match. Yeah, and then I'm just going to take a measurement there, I'm going to go down to say about that thickness there, and I want to create a little belly in this. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on here, but the back one I want to end on that mark there. So now I've got a center piece to my handle, and I'm just going to follow this line through to my tail. Yeah, and then I'm going to find something that complements this in a pommel design. I like that, and then we'll do a little finial, just a round little section on the end there. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm just sighting down it and deciding, look, this curve can be a lot smoother. I don't want that one as high, so that it can come down as well. All right, I do like that. So in comes the erasure, and I'm just getting rid of the thick lines here, because I don't want my over scratching to all of a sudden go and influence the flow on the design. Now I'm bringing this out to the edge of the quillen block. It's not actually going to sit there. Um, what I now want to do is I want to do a transition from the quillen block both forward and backwards into my handle. And that transition, I would want to, I'm just picking an arbitrary length here or width there. Um, it's not halfway. Once again, you can use the golden mean to uh, go and figure that out. But uh, if it looks good to the eye, then uh, It'll look good, man. So I do want to go and make sure that my blade, and then comes my caliper, um, or my vernier, is going to be 15 mil at the max. No, I'm going to bring that down to, let's call it 13 millimeters. Yeah, so half of 13 is 6.5. So I'm just doing a, a rough guesstimate on a 6.5, and I'm going to put a just a little dot there. So that's really just an indicator for me as the maximum thickness of that blade. 
curve obviously would be that number of slides as well. Yeah. So that there and that there is my maximum blade thickness. Yeah. So we've got that and we've got that. Quill and block is going to end there and it is going to end there. Now I want to do a transition over and over. So uh, basically what I found is that whatever you have in front of the quill and block, you want to do the same on the back of the quill and block. So just to make that transition nicer across the quill and block. Yeah? And then I've gone and uh, drawn in too far. I want to go lower. So, kill the sign because that is now obviously distracting me. I'm going to draw my quillum block again. And I really do need my eyes around. Okay, so I'm going to put on my optimizer so I can actually see what the hell I'm doing. I'll put that and that. And my hand is in the way. So maybe if I bring this down. Ever so slightly, you guys will see it uh, better. Yeah. Okay. So we've got that. Now my transition in front. Let's call it there. And I want to do at least a step of some sort. Uh, so if I'm going to do a hollow, I prefer that to be a three millimeter wide. For the sheer fact that I have got a three millimeter round file, yeah, so it's easy to do that transition. Um, then on that transition, we are going to step it up just one single little step, just so that I've got symmetry on both sides of my transition. We'll do that there, and now. I can so I can take that level and bring that up, or even dip down even more. Let's dip down a bit more. Yeah. Bring that coach up on that line there. I want to actually step it up in the curve. Not that much. Let's see what I'm doing. Want that a hard line? I want to step that down, but I don't want to straight, so I will definitely be adding something in there. Let's just do a not on center, just off center, let's do something that's a bit higher, something will sit in there. Uh, now I just want to carry over that height to the back as I did make it a bit higher. And we'll draw that in. Yeah. So the same transition on this side, then that one can come lower. Okay, so I do want to just separate this. Uh, we'll split it, let's call it there. And where else? I will do something in it there as well. So there, and then something there. And I do like the flow, and I might not want to break it up. And something like this and maybe go the old trusted little acorn root. Maybe. Mm, 
Okay, so this is the Susan decisions. So now I want to bring that centerpiece up ever so slightly. And I do want a transition in the layer and some sort of transition on the side as well. Now, ideally, you would want those two transitions to be symmetrical, but uh, not the end of the world if they're not. I like that so far. Now I want to go down my blade. So once again, I'm going to use the uh, aspect ratio calipers. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to divide my blade from the quillen block to the tip of this thing. And I'm just going to do a mark. Done. All right, so let's just get a new picture here. Yeah. So I've got that. I'll make my little mark. <laughs> so you'll notice that the, I didn't use the, the aspect ratio overall. I'm using this just to break it up so that you get something that is beautiful to the eye. And that, that's it. That's all that design is. Uh, I have got that. And there I actually want to do a solid transition into the actual blade. So I'm just going to drag that oak over. I'm going to take from that transition over there to my little tip. And I'm just going to drag a line down. All right. I know that that tip can't obviously be that thin, otherwise it'll, it'll break off. So I'm giving myself a millimeter spacing away from my line, about five, six millimeters up from the tip. Throw my pencil down there and I'm going to redraw that line. Okay. So now that tip is a lot better. So that tip will then end up as a small little triangle. So if I draw that uh, larger, uh, let's just do that. There's a center line I've taken from the tip six millimeters up um, and then a millimeter out. And then the taper goes up to the blade and this little tip here will be a little sharper taper than the rest of the blades taper would be. If that makes any sense. Yeah? Okay. So that's just to make sure that that uh, tip is a bit stronger. So I can now go and divide that up again into a upside down two thirds about there, or two thirds. Let's use the ratio calipers again. Um, so from that center line, get that ratio and then flip it around so the small piece at the bottom and about there. So if I want to do a breakaway point, so in other words, create an, a purposeful weakness in the tip of the blade there. So if you hate someone so much that you have to stab him um, and then do this so that that tip breaks off in his body, that's where you're going to do that. Yeah. So uh, we might do that. I'm not sure. I haven't decided what I'm going to do on the blade yet. Okay, so up to this point, I want to come out to there, just do a little indicator, and then from there, I'm going to need a transition into my blade. Yeah, and I'm going to need a transition at the back of this into whatever I do there. Here, I'm just going to divide it up. I'm just going to pick some other thing done there. I want to take that and I want to duplicate it before my blade. So let's put it, shall we put it in the back? Why not? Why not? I don't want to make it as thick though. And I don't want to exceed, or well, maybe I should. Hold on, that is an idea. So let's step this down. So I've got that following. Uh, we'll probably do a transition there. More flat and do a ball. Same height, 
do a little flat and then come into I don't know what. Don't know yet. Uh, uh, flat. And then I don't know. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. That is actually cool. I can actually split this into a small little circle as well. Yeah, that's good. Then I can replicate that on this side. I'm going to do a smaller one here. I'm also going to do a negative in it. And now from that transition there, uh, I might just make this straight line, am I? Because that follows that thickness there. It's slightly thicker, but it won't fool the eye, which is cool. And then this section here, I would want to do facets on. Okay, so I'm just going to do draw. Do I'm just going to do in some fake facets over there, uh, and that is pretty much it. I do need some sort of transition going into my tri blade, which is a triangle blade, of course. So the tip of this dagger is going to be a triangle. Yeah, so cross section there would look like that. Yeah, cross section there would be something. That effect, and you will not say that I actually studied art. Okay, I don't know what the sound is like. Uh, let me just get this mic over. I think the sound sucked throughout this entire thing. All right, how's the sound now, guys? <laughs> Richard, how's it going, man? Nick, how's it, Marcus? Excellent, Dion. Uh, who is this? Jake, Jake, Jake. Can I get a birthday shout out? Jake William. Um, happy birthday, buddy. Hope you have an absolute good one. Get spoiled rotten and all that. Yeah, and save me some cake. If there's no cake, dude, it's got to be beer. Yeah, it's easy as that. Uh, Manir Zwan, how's it going, buddy? Then uh, we've got uh, uh, <laughs> Jake. No issues, brother. No issues. All right. Uh, Sean is reckon. <laughs> Daniel, so I like that. All right. So um, let's get some more comments, guys. Thank you for popping in um, and joining us on this little adventure. Eh? Okay, so that's that transition. That section there, uh, the Quillen block, if I have to do a cross section through it, um, I would want that. Uh, it's going to be 20 wide, so that is too wide. Let's just, I've got a freaking ruler right next to me here. Uh, so let's just get 20 mil here. So it's going to be. And now I'm basically just going to play around with that radius there is going to be something in the region of a 12. So if I split this up and I split that up, now I'm going to do a radius of 12 in there. And this is where I'd go and get calipers and the whole thing um, and actually go and draw a 12 millimeter circle. Which will then so a radius of six, seeing that uh, that little first transition is six mil, yeah. Uh, so I'll then do a radius of six millimeters, yeah. Oh, I should have done that radius of uh, six millimeters, which will give me a diameter of 12, yeah. Um, all I want to do is I want to leave two mil in there, so a two millimeter spacing, so that seen from this edge. I have got that, I've got that, go to that, yeah, um, and then, so I've, I've got that 
two millimeter spacing there. Does that make sense? Well, I hope so. It's not that you can ask questions. I should actually bring a couple of guys into the stream on the next one. Yeah. Okay. So that scene from this angle. So that scene from that angle. That is just purely a cross section. Um, that there is going to be 20 millimeters. Um, and then my height is 12, uh, 14, 16, 16 millimeters in height. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. I want that two mole spacing there. And I'm pretty sure if you now go mathematically work it out, that two mole there versus the spacing on the side is, uh, is actually going to give you that uh, uh, golden meme again. Yeah. You can go and work it out, but as long as it looks good. But the main thing I want to do is on this view, I might want to cut something that I do on, on most of my quillins. So I do want to cut a little ferrule. So on the corner, I want to break the corner off. Yeah. In some other way. Just to smooth in the transition that is then going to go over into uh, the equivalence. In other words, whatever I then come up to do. So there's a bully key and they go out here. And the same thing to this side. To soften the transition. And now you can go funky. You can bring this up uh, at a slight angle. Do a curvature in there. And you can go absolutely mad. I like keeping them flat. But then in the stilettos, seeing that I'm going to be doing this entire quillen on the lathe, I like doing this as a, a half round. So if I do a cross section through there, that is going to look like that. Yeah, so if I then cut that recess, if you understand what I'm saying, yeah, so that will be a curvature, so a little roundedness happening in there. Yeah, okay, so that was it. Um, that's pretty much the design. I still have work on the pommel. I uh, know what I'm going to do there, so we might as well start hard lining this in. So that there is going to happen. There is going to be a step down here. There's going to be a step down there. Okay. That line nice and up. I am going to do a step. Nope, I want to do around there. So around to a step, flat on that top. Uh, then we said we're going to go on a rounding. We're going to build that out. Okay, we'll set there on a round. And then we're going to have a negative curve in here going on to a flat. There we go. Other side of the quillen block, same thing. starting to look like something yes it is and seeing that i'm splitting this so it'll be about there and there and there so we've got that in then on this transition here, we've got a rounding that's happening with another section. 
And ideally that and that should be the same width. Yeah, but I'll come in and at a later point and say, okay, fine, uh, that is three millimeters and that is three millimeters and then adjust the line or do a second technical sketch. Um, it was on a light table with just uh, a tracing paper over this and go and adjust these measurements to uh, fit whatever files and tools and, and stuff I have. So that I don't have to go and machine extra tools just to be able to cut a little six millimeter uh, radius or a three millimeter radius or a... That should be about a 40 mil radius in there um, so that I know I have a 40 mil uh, round wheel that I can go and cut that out. Or they sit there with, uh, with files. Uh, but anyway, so that is it so far. Um, I do want to just do a bit of show, but I do like this idea. I want to put something in there. Don't know what I want to do with that yet, but I do want it standing out. Yeah. We've got that. We've got this side. And I keep on doing that as a straight line. I don't know why. So normally I stand and draw. I don't sit. But the cameras just didn't work, man. They didn't want to play with. Ooh, that's an idea. I, I mean, if I'm going to over-exaggerate this, you can go and complete negative curve that, yeah, which will look cool. But uh, mentally file that for another time. So if I was going to do engraving or carving this here, these areas here are perfect canvases. Um, now to mimic that there, that there, I might as well go and cut a little negative in here. Yeah, and that now gives you an opportunity for texturing in that little negative. So it doesn't have to be a technically perfect sketch. And if you want to highlight something going on a negative, working in negative shading, yeah. If you do it properly, I won't screw up that much. It's purely to show me what I'm going to be doing in there, yeah. So whether you do positive shading, negative shading, just in there and going with little half circles in there mimicking a little texture a couple of darker lines in the middle will make it look like it is uh, half rounded right you can do the same thing here but what i do want to do there and i did draw that a bit thin that should be three millimeters done so let's draw them in as three more Get that over with. Yeah. And now I want to drop that down so that my straight comes up, I get a sharp little corner, and then it goes into the transition. Yep, something like that. Okay, at the back here, I'm thinking uh, I had two little spaces there, so we might as well continue with that concept. And then am I... Don't know. We don't know. Let's have a look at what I've done so I don't go and replicate anything else. Yeah. I actually like that idea. We could also go for 
something that steps in small and then comes out at an angle. Will that work? No. Nope. So one thing that is uh, always evident in these, it either has a ball at the end or uh, the acorn idea, which then gives you a longer pommel. <coughs> I think let's go with the acorn. Oh, I think so. What do you think? Acorn? To acorn or not to acorn? Let's acorn. I tell you what. Let's acorn. Acorn. Uh, let's have a look. That is it, man. Um, you want to emphasize certain aspects um, and, and making use of repetition of certain design and certain elements um, is what binds things together. If you have a look at uh, beautiful French furniture, uh, the turned feet, there are always elements that are, are replicated. You go and look at uh, pillars um, in architecture, uh, Greek, Greek architecture. Um, flutes, uh, roundings, pillar caps, uh, pillar foots. Uh, there's always repetition. Always, always, always. Mm. And this thing is going to change, I can tell you that, because one thing I do want to do is use something that I've done in the past. Um, so those little domes, yeah? So there you can see it's a, it's a little dome. Um, I want to do that on this handle, uh, but I'll probably stagger it in two lines. I'm not hundred percent sure yet. Yeah. Probably two lines and stagger it in a, in a zigzag format. Um, so something to cool symmetry, brother symmetry. So that's just to give you an idea. Yeah. So we'll probably stagger them like so, or maybe other way around. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I do want to use those uh, pins again. So maybe if I do the large dome there, um, and then I'll probably do, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll probably do eight. So there's, I mean, there's another one there. Um, It means that there's one there, it means that there's one there, and then on the other side, there's going to be another one in there. And then on the second row, we will probably use six, maybe eight again, but then I don't want them to sit the same, same areas. So it'll probably look something like that. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that I'll figure out uh, whether I do just four around it, um, or whether you do eight. So that that'll be uh, QTY eight. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether I actually go with that. I also don't know. So we've got this. We've got that transition there uh, into. I don't know, a little rounding. Something a bit more substantial. And that's lopsided. So let me not draw the other side. I'm going to do a three mil in there. I'd like to do a flat transition. And then come up with me acorn. How far am I across for my 90 here? Already substantially. So that's my 90. You know what? Let's have a look at this. 
So what I can do is extend my tip to about there, and then I can come over and make this episode slightly longer because I do want a little ball at the end. Yeah, it has to be a ball. And then once again, you'll find the ratio in acorns. They just guesstimate it. If it looks good, then it probably is there. And make this thinner. There's an acorn is straight out of the shell. Straight out of the shell. And then it does that. Yeah. And then I'm just kind of sketching on the other side. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, we'll do another little thingy there. And there. So that's kind of just to give you like a ghost image on the other side. Just so that you get an idea of what this thing is going to look like symmetrically. Uh, I do want a hard line on the quillen. Uh, so that's what we'll end up there. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so that is pretty much it. And on this, uh, I might as well go and so that there, uh, if I have to draw that bigger, what I want to do is little spaces. And if I do a really concrete little, I don't know, uh, perspective, I would want to go and either do every second one as a little loopy, what, what. So that's just an idea of on there. So that's what those little lies might mean. It might also mean that I've got, um, I'll take a little checkering file and go and do little teeth around them. But now you need to take in consideration how broad the checkering file is and that there is still the same height as that. Yeah. So you will need to come in at an angle and you're going to probably bump this thing here, which is going to fuck up. So rule one is don't fuck up. Right? So you might have to go in with a triangle file and file each and every one of those. So thinking about the limitations of your tool and your actual skill, you end up dropping a lot of detail. Uh, but that that's kind of the idea that I'm going for here. Uh, I think that's it. Now my blade transition. I've decided to make the blade longer. Yeah, and all I'm oh, sorry, and all I'm going to be doing is just standing up and looking at this. That was my original. Coming down to here is not going to look odd at all. Yeah, so I'm going to come down to here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the blade out. Yeah. Good. So, for it not to look odd, we'll do that little transition thingy on that side, and we'll draw in that line there. <clears throat> Bring in that transition, and uh, throw in something there. Okay, so now, what I'm going to do is uh, draw, although this is the center of my blade, and as I explained, the cross-section there gives me a triangle sitting in that fashion. I'm now going to be drawing it from this fashion. Yeah, so imagine that line is no longer there. Because I know the thing is triangular, so now my design flipped and it looks like that, yeah? So if I have to do a cross section, a, a, that would be a, a, aha, a, b, damn it. A, A, 
Yeah. So uh, there is that there. So now what I want to do is I want to not have very sharp shoulders there, but I do want to go and cut in a fuller down this freaking thing. Why? Because apparently I'm stupid. Now I did talk about that breakaway tip. Is that breakaway tip now smaller? Let's use ratio for that. Uh... <laughs> That's a lucky guess right there. All right, so I'm going to do a small little weakness in there. Okay, and that tip is obviously going to be thinned down a lot more. Um, I want to give myself a little space there. And then... Now, this here is going to give us hours and hours and hours of fun. In making this bloody thing. There's one thing to draw it. It's a completely different story to make it. Okay. Do extra lines on my drawing here. So what I want to do there, if we now go and enlarge this, am I still in picture? Am I still in picture? Let's draw it there. So if I go and draw my triangle blade there, so what I now want to do is I want to fuller in. And obviously you can't grind this. Yeah. I don't know why the hell am I drawing it here. Which now gives you the opportunity to go completely, excuse my French, balls to the wall. So you can now go and drill holes through there. <coughs> and in a lot of uh, 15, 16, even into the 17th century, you'll see piercings in blades where the, the, the blade... Uh, comes down, and then there's uh, fullers in it, for instance. There's one fuller, there's two fullers, for instance. So there's a fuller, there's a fuller, and then goes into the actual blade itself, right? So there's a fuller, there's a fuller round. I can't do a round, half rounds. Okay, and it goes into the blade. So what the guys did was on here to go and drill a little hole and then oval it out. And then do a little triangle, for instance, and do another oval, then another little triangle, and another oval. Say so they would pierce that right through the blade, uh, normally in the center line. But uh, yeah, so that is the coolest little decorations. And then on the sharp little fuller marks, they would go and cut one, two, three little lines. Yeah, so you'll have on that, if you now enlarge that, you'll have a single cut, a larger cut, and then a smaller cut on the center of that, that fuller line, which just adds little decorations. And you'll see that uh, little thingy down there. Then, uh, for instance, the inch down the blade, you'll see that again. And the inch down the blade, you'll see that again. Um, and that just adds a little detail. And it's all these little details. It's not just making the blade geometrically correct, um, blah, 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 blah. So you won't find any detail in here, um, but on here you can now go and say into this corner, we'll put a hole there and a hole there. So obviously that one will go through this way and that one will go through that way. So seen from the top here, you'll have that hole there and that hole there. Yeah, so we'll do two, and I don't know if I'll be able to do this, another two down there. Yeah, and then we can maybe put some of that carving decorations on there. And another one. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. 
but you get the idea. Yeah, so looking at historic pieces gives you the inspiration. You don't want to blindly just copy that piece. What you want to do is you want to take away, learn the lesson, and then go and apply this to uh, yours. Yeah, so that there, I might thin it down when we're on the lathe. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm thinking that I should maybe add, and this is something I haven't done yet, a second little clean line through there. A second little clean line. Now, there are numerous little tools, like, for instance, uh, eraser plates that you can now go and use to not erase away half your drawing. Okay. And these you'll find at most high-end stationery stores. But there's no need to have that. So all I'm doing now is um, I'm just ghosting this thing on the other side. Just to kind of give me an idea of where I'm going with this. Well, like that. Yeah, so if you excuse the, the chicken scratches on that side, that is the basics of the center, the shank of the blade. So now going over to the quillen, and uh, what I'm going to do there is I, I do like the longer quillens, yeah? Or maybe I should do a short one. Let's do a short one. So I'm going to say about there. How did I do that? Remember, I split that up. So that was my initial dividing line in that ratio there. So all I'm doing now is I'm taking a rough measurement and I'm pulling it to the side and I'm saying that there. So that would work proportionally with this dagger. Yeah. So if I get this thing in pitch, come on, I apparently can't do this. Left is right, right is left. Right is left, left is right. So what I should be doing is putting little marks on my table. Yeah. But anyway, so that there would be proportionally correct. But will it? I can cut it down to there. And it'll still be cool. I'm thinking there. Yeah. So let's do that. And then my chicken scratches on the other side I can get rid of. Lighten that some of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a three mil transition there. I might want to do two little thingies, uh, or even just replicate that. So I'll do one transition into a taper. into a second transition, into a base, and into an acorn. That'll work. That'll definitely, oh crap, I just spotted something. That's better. That will definitely work. So I do want this to be broader than my six mil. So we're going to make that just ever so slightly broader. I don't know if that's going to work very well. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to do a Definite transition, do another one, and then make this tad longer. 
I'm going to then go into that little look, do a transition there. And that's too thin. So also I'm going to be using bronze on this. So you need to keep the structural integrity of the material that you're working with uh, in mind. So we might want to do... Oh, well, that's a good idea. Hold on, I haven't done a little curvy what what. about that. Hmm. Okay, we'll get back to that. That is still kicking my ass. So what are we going to do there? I don't want to replicate that. We've got that one, two, three. Three is cool. Five is too much. We might make the cooling block a tad longer. Will that make a difference? Yeah, I don't like that. Maybe it was a slightly longer. Okay, so we're now going to be at I'm still on 20. So we are going to sit down from there. Are we going to do a little flat transition first? Flat, and then go into a upraised. Okay, that might work. No, but then we won't be able to facet it. So, fucking stumped on the last piece. Yeah. So we've got a transition. We have got. Let's just work on that width there for now. And then we are going to bring this down. We're just going to transition in like this. Mm, no, we're definitely not going to bring that down. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I obviously want to bring this up higher. And that is not working. So we're just going to step with that same thickness and move that in to a slight curvature. That works.
See, there's an idea for a for the next one where you've got uh, a flat step and where the acorn goes in a positive curve you go out in a slightly negative curve uh, will I bring that back and then I'll make that a slight longer before it goes into the transition so where this sits and then that comes out you can bring this is this in picture? Is it? Where am I drawing? No, I'm not in picture. I'm sorry. And then you draw this out. Bring this out. And then from here, you can do another little step and then go over into an acorn. Yeah? So there is a, just another idea. <clears throat> so you can take that same concept and then apply it to the pommel. So we might just, because I actually like this idea, might just do that. And have a little flat line on there, which will give me a double line here. And I can still do a little ball on the end. as opposed to just that. Now drawing this that size is fairly easy. Yeah. Now go and figure out if I only have a three mil a three millimeter radius uh, file, what you can do, you can slice the file. So take away a half a millimeter on this side, half a millimeter on this side so that you end up with a file that does that. Yeah, but as soon as you roll the file in your hand, you're going to open this up. It's also nice for getting broader sections in. So in other words, filing in ovals. But that won't work there. Okay, so that is the basic idea. I will uh, now go and sit and confer with myself and decide what we're actually going to be building on this thing. But that is my design process. Um, that's it. So that's it for uh, episode one. Yeah, now we're going to spend a bit of time just uh, shooting the breeze. Uh... <laughs> Dude, that brooch will cost you two and a half thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, so if you do, like, just when, when I turn the taper and you do the handle before you've got a cross guard on, yeah, um, it looks like a, a really, really fancy Harry Potter wand. Don't worry, I'll show you guys that. It's one of my, my two uh, jokes I have. So, Mr. Jack Connors in the house. Thanks, brother. That is absolutely appreciated. Uh, who else is it? Piet, how's it going, brother? Mark, how's it going, man? Uh, no, Mark, I mean, this here versus a pencil. It is not the tool that causes the design. It is the hand. Whether you use that or whether you use that, it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. This is just a hell of a lot quicker. Now, you can take this up and marry the two, get yourself a digitizing pad, digital pen, and then draw, as I had here, directly on computer. That's it. So, it, I mean, it, I always, no disrespect intended, um, I actually read an article uh, in an old Blade magazine. Uh, where, where the guys were going on about is it CNC, uh, what constitutes handmade, blah, 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 blah. And that just completely pisses me off. Yeah. Um, if I say it's handmade, it's handmade. There's enough sun for everyone. Yeah. Um, done, man. If you decide to CNC your stuff, um, I decide to go sit there with files and be stupid <laughs> like I normally am. Um, that's, that's my choice. Yeah. That's my choice. If I want to go and dig into a riverbed and grab my old iron ore and go and make my own fucking steel, um, or I just place an order online and have top quality, fucking perfect, perfect knife steel delivered to my house. Yeah? I don't know. But anyway, anyway so drawing, I love drawing. I, I, it's a process I like um, the way oh crap the way of quickly changing my mind and you see there that little gaping little just thingies so we'll just 
quickly put something in there. We're going to do something there, and we're going to do something there. Yeah, it looks like the Jetsons Tower. Oh, crap, I can't even draw the same line, straight line. But, yeah, we'll, we'll do something there. So it'll be really thin. And like I mentioned, over here, so we can do the same thing. So I'm just going to draw dotty lines in there um, and then make a note. Do cool shit, yeah. Uh, yeah? Okay. So I'll probably ignore that and completely and cut off half of the thing while I'm machining it and 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 <coughs> so yeah, so the whole idea is that is it. I don't know how long this has been. It's an hour and six minutes to do the design to finalize this thing and actually make the choices on on what I actually want to do um and what <sighs> I might change this. Uh, I might, like I said, I've got no idea there. So thinking about those little issues um, might actually take you longer than actually making this. Though. So that's it. Uh, who else is there? Excellent. So uh, Antoine is saying that uh, good evening. He's uh, glad to see that uh, I'm doing this. Um, and thanks, Anthony. I appreciate that, man. Uh... <laughs> All right, so that was pretty much it. Guys, I'm going to love you. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you right here. Uh, the next time will probably be, um, well, I'll go out and select my material. My material will be, uh, for that one there, it'll be a twist, uh, Damascus. Um, why? Because I already have a piece that's already twisted and uh, done. Uh, let's have a look where the heck did I put it. There we go. So now I need to make sure. Oh, <laughs> look at that. It actually fits. All right. So that I've done. Um, this was done. Crap. Um, probably four, three, three, three months ago. Yeah. Okay. So I've got that and then everything here upwards will be bronze. Done. So bronze of Damascus. Yeah. So the entire heft, which is the handle, the pommel, and the quillen included is referred to as the heft versus the blade. Um, that there is just fancy ass stuff. You don't have to have that. Um, and very few traditional stilettos actually have them uh, where this transition area sits right there. Yeah. Uh, just fancy. But I like. I've done two of them in that fashion. They look stunning. Um, so I make it. I can decide what I want to do there. Yeah. Okay. So have I done one with bronze in the front of it, of the guard? Yes, I have. Uh, so you can either decide, look, uh, I want to do that as Damascus and bronze and Damascus and another piece of bronze and then do the quill and block out of Damascus with the finials out of bronze or and you can split this up and make it as complicated as you want here. Yeah? Uh, like, for instance, this here. I don't know if that is even going to be possible. I don't know. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I might actually use that in there. I might just use that. I am not sure. But anyway, so that was it. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you did, did do the, the thing, yeah? The, the ED subscribe, blah, 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 blah. This is the first and the last time I'm going to ask. I'll probably forget and ask again. But comments and feedback is appreciated, yeah? So let me know if there are any other series that you want me to do. Um, if there is, I don't know, any weird stuff that uh, you want to see me do, yeah? No dancing. Um, probably on the next one, I will be, uh, I'll have a haircut or not. Who cares, man? Who cares? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for spending time in my life, uh, in my little weird and wonderful world um, where I am the mayor. Okay. I want to upgrade. I, I want to be the king. Done. Well, at least the president. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, have fun, enjoy, and we'll see you on the flip side. Cheers. Now I need to stop this thing. Stop. <laughs>